Hello, and welcome to the Tamarack Solar Ground Mount Configuration Tool Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be showing you how to use our Ground Mount Configurator and hopefully make the process a little bit easier for you. First off, to get to the sizing tool, you'll need to go to tamaracksolar.com, navigate over to our Ground Mount tab, and select Launch the Calculator tool. Once we get to the Ground Mount Configurator, you'll be met with this landing page. From here, you can select Get Started, or if you'd like, you can just select the Project Details tab. In this tab, you can enter in the project information, project details, address, name, module, brand, and model, and any additional notes that you want to save for your use on this project. Once you fill out that information, you'll proceed to the Solar Array and Environment tab. In the Solar Array and Environment tab, you can enter in the module dimensions, the amount of modules, the tilt array, environmental information, and material costs. So with the solar array, I've selected the dimensions of a solar ever module. I'm doing 20 modules at a 30 degree tilt. From here, we can select exposure category. I'm going to select exposure category B. Snow load, we're going to just stick with zero for the time being. And wind speed, we're going to go with 130 miles per hour. Although you can change it to whatever you would like depending on the project parameters. Soil class, we're gonna stick with class three. We're gonna be installing this on a flat piece of ground with no slope. And we don't have any specifications on the maximum hole depth that we can use. Moving on to material costs. This is a field that you can enter in the cost per foot for the two inch pipe and the cost per yard of the concrete. Once we have that information in, we can move to under structure configuration. So with the array configuration, you can select between a four module column or a three module column. So obviously uh, four modules is gonna work better for 20, but you can select the three module columns and it will design it appropriately, although we are going to stick with four modules per column. The second option you have is to select with bracing or without bracing. For this project, we're going to stick with bracing. This is cross bracing between the north and south pipes. This information here about the pier sizing, so it's the hole diameter and the hole depth, we're going to stick with the, um, like I said, with the bracing, all of the pier diameter and hole information here will be saved and be on the project report at the end. Now, why you would select with bracing versus without bracing? To quickly touch on this, when you are not using the cross bracing, there will be more vertical posts required, which means more holes, more concrete, more pipe to be able to complete the project. Some instances, this is ideal, but for the most part, having the bracing, having fewer holes in the ground and less pipe is generally the preferable option. So we're gonna select with bracing and we're gonna go up to the final tab, which is the engineering and parts list. On this page, it gives you the understructure details. So array dimensions, the post spacing, all of that information is going to be included on this page. It also gives you the product information that you will need for what is required to install the project. So right here, we give you the list of kits that are required kit A, B, and C. 
or it gives you the raw parts if you were going to piece it together yourself. At the top, you can click this button right here, which will provide you with all the project details. So all of the information you entered about the project, so all the site information that you entered, module details. It also has the dimensions. Like I said before, here are your peer dimensions, the different options you have for the different size peer holes. Bill of materials. You can click this button to save it to your computer. And then you can click this tab right here, which will bring you to the engineering tab with all of our engineering for the different states. I want to provide a little more context about our kits. In the example build that we had on the configurator tool, the parts list called for five total kits, two kit A's, one kit B, and two kit C's. The kit A's I have as kit A number one, which is represented with green, kit A number two represented in yellow, the kit B is represented in orange, kit C number one is represented in pink, kit C number two, purple. All of the kits contain the same amount of attachment points and hardware needed to mount your modules. They also contain the same amount of rails. The only thing changing between the kits is the amount of top caps. So, as you can see, kit A number one has one, two, three, four top caps. Kit A number two, one, two, three, four top caps. Kit B has two top caps, one, two. And kit C, number one and number two, do not have any top caps included in the kits. The reason we do this is to min-max the amount of top caps so that you don't have any extras left over, but you have everything needed to complete your project. I hope this has been informative and please, if you have any questions, reach out to us here at Tamarack Solar. We will be more than happy to answer any of your questions.